Hello and welcome to another episode of Bonus. Uh, this time for the gameplay, I have perhaps the most frustrating game released this year, Mario Kart 8. This is actually the, uh, the first game I've bought, full price, for my Wii U, principally because of the free game offer, which uh, I think, I, what did I choose? I chose Pikmin 3 for my free game, because it's, uh, it's the highest reviewing game. So anyway, yes, I've, I've been playing a bit of this. I'm not very good at Mario Kart, I will say that, but I've, I've been practicing. And of course, when I say practicing, I mean I've, I've slowly come to accept that this game is almost entirely based on luck. Anyway, E3's kicked off. Seems like there's a whole bunch of new games on the horizon. And none of them are coming out until the end of this year, or 2015. So there's nothing left to do but wait out the summer and subsist on whatever scraps fall in this uh, rather dead period in the release schedule. I suppose we've had Mario Kart, that's, uh, that's a gem in the desert. What have we got this week? Um, Enemy Front is coming out this week. Uh, no, I haven't heard of it either. Sniper Elite 3 is coming out, and also a Grid Autosport. I'm actually quite looking forward to Grid Autosport, because I have an insatiable thirst for driving games. And I don't really mind the Codemasters ones. Grid? Grid's alright. I preferred the first one, I think, to Grid 2. Grid 2 is okay. I've actually found this week I've gone back to Forza 5, because they've added the Nürburgring, so I've been, been playing a bit of that. Anyway, games, games, games. There are some big beaters, sorry, big betas coming this summer as well, actually. I think uh, the Battlefield Hardline one, that started a couple of days ago. I've played that. I wanted to like it. I love the ideas of cops and robbers, but I'm not impressed with it. I just, I don't know. It wasn't very much fun. That's my initial impression, anyway. Uh, I'm going to sink some more time into it. Hopefully it will click with me and I'll start to enjoy it. But it's not particularly compelling at the minute. Also, Destiny. I think the Destiny Alpha. I think that starts on Thursday. I'm quite excited about that. Although, I I don't know. Something about the gameplay trailers that it seems very slow-paced. Very understated in terms of exciting gameplay. In that it doesn't seem that exciting. Which is slightly concerning because Destiny is made by Bungie. And Bungie are supposed to make good games. But then, of course, you know, some key personnel have left Bungie. And maybe Destiny won't be the game that we hope for. But, you know, it's not out yet, and I'm not going to condemn it. But hopefully, hopefully, the Alpha will give us a taste of what's good about the game, you know? Anyway, I shall stop talking to myself, and I shall start answering your questions. Who's first? Jordan X. Brooks says, Hello, Stu. It's E3 week as of this comment, and Sledgehammer have shown off Call of Duty Advanced Warfare gameplay. My question is, what did you think of it? Well, the graphics are nice. The game looks pretty, it certainly looks like a, a next-gen game, uh, that was in quotes by the way. And everything started off pretty well, you know, I think it was it was an orbital insertion or some sort of aerial insertion in some sort of pod device, some sort of future thing, I don't know. That was cool, that was exciting, that was new, and then it kind of just turned into regular Call of Duty, you know, the soldier boots on the ground, he gets his rifle out and then... All of a sudden, it's the same old gunplay that we've seen a million times before. And the worst thing is, it's not even a recognisable rifle. It's nothing iconic. It's some made-up space gun that nobody cares about. I had major flashbacks to the Modern Warfare 3 reveal, where the, the, the gun fights down Wall Street in New York. It's a different setting. It's darker. There's more neon. It's, it's in Seoul this time. But it just, I mean, it looks the same as any other Call of Duty game. I can honestly say I'm not particularly excited for the campaign. Now, the multiplayer might be okay, but I don't know, I don't know. At this point, I mean, I've got to think, how much time am I prepared to invest in Call of Duty for my channel? So, I mean, the extreme option is for me to spend an entire year covering Advanced Warfare. This isn't going to happen. I don't want to do that. But then the question then remains, how long do I spend with the game? And the longer I spend with the game, the, the more of a risk it is. Because if, if the game turns out to be bad, if it turns out to be poorly received and it just doesn't get the, the views on YouTube, then, then I don't want to be stuck partway through a series. I mean, Titanfall, for instance. I love Titanfall. It's a cracking multiplayer game. It does lack content. It does lack longevity. I'm only doing 10 episodes, but, you know, from halfway through that series, people were like, Oh, Stu, Titanfall's dead. It's not dead, you're just not interested in it anymore. Anyway, the last thing I want is to be doing a long Call of Duty series and to have a similar thing happen. So, that kind of begs the question, how long should I spend with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare? At this point in time, I don't know. 
To be honest, the way I'm feeling now, I am about ready to fully embrace variety content. It's a little bit scary, you know, not having a game like Call of Duty to prop up your view counts, because that's, that's what Call of Duty was in the past. It was a really, really safe way of getting views. These days, not so much. There's a lot more competition, and videos compete on their own merit. Anyway, scary times. I've got to say, wasn't too impressed by Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, but it's Call of Duty, innit? People are going to lap it up. Dr. Maxis64 says, Do you play any instruments? I would consider myself a novice when it comes to keyboard and guitar. I'm pretty good at sequencing, I'm pretty good at programming drum machines, I know my way around Reason, for instance, uh, but as far as live performance, yeah, I'm, I am pretty much nothing but a novice, really. I know a few chords on guitar, and I can play, you know, basic stuff on keyboard, but uh, no, I'm not particularly well practiced or, or very good. That doesn't stop me from trying to make music though, oh no, 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 no. I do occasionally slip a bit of my own production in stuff that I do. In fact, you can hear some of my music in the, uh, the 101 Things to Do in Watch Dogs, the background loops. I quickly toss those together, they're just stuff I did on Reason. Uh, what else? Easter eggs and video games. I wrote the music for that. Uh, the Desert Eagle video, yep. The music in uh, the Brief History of Gore, and the Brief History of Video Games as well, yeah. Some of my tracks feature in them. The stuff I do is, is pretty minimalistic, pretty bare bones, but I, you know, that's the, that's the type of music I like, you know, kind of raw electronic stuff. I've been tempted quite recently, I have a, I have a Korg, a micro Korg. I've been tempted to set that up and maybe do some recordings and maybe make some tracks out of that, just for future video work. But uh, obviously writing music is, is quite a time-consuming affair, it's something I don't necessarily have time for. But sometimes if you hear some music and you don't recognise it, there's a fairly good chance that, that I put it together and I've, I've snuck it in as a, a cheeky little track. Next, Jeremy Kyle says, Have you ever had any videos where you spend a lot of time writing scripts, recording gameplay, etc? But when it came down to actually completing slash posting the video, you thought, this really isn't that good, and scrapped the video. Unfinished videos. Uh, I don't think I've ever completed a video and then not subsequently uploaded it. It's not as if the quality threshold on YouTube is set particularly high, so... I mean, as long as there's some effort and some merit to a video, I'm not too shy of uploading it. But I have been in the past, I suppose, quite conservative about the types of videos that I do. I mean, most of the stuff that I've done has been Call of Duty, just weapon guides. And they're a really safe bet. No risks involved, just talk about a gun. It's only really stuff that's a little bit more freeform, a little bit more variety content that you know, can sometimes get left behind. There have been a couple of things which have entered production and then never finished production. Generally speaking, they don't get very far, but some do get further than others. Uh, one that comes to mind is the Metro Last Light video, which uh, I actually wrote about 75% of the script, and I recorded all of the gameplay and then subsequently split that gameplay into usable clips. I'm not entirely sure what happened to that video, but um, I do know that it was left unfinished. I think I simply ran out of time and I went back onto weapon guides and I never returned to it, which is which is a bit of a shame, really. But there is hope and I think I might actually return to that video and I, I might try and get it out at some point fairly soon. It was originally supposed to be the uh, the pilot for the Weapons Of series concept, but it was ultimately uh, the Wolfenstein video that sort of premiered that idea. So that's one, and uh, that probably will see the light of day. Uh, beyond that, I've also planned some, some Forza content. In fact, I, uh, I wrote a Forza 5 video, but again, I never really had time to finish it. I was bogged down with Ghosts, and then since then I've been bogged down with Titanfall. Uh, the video, it was, I suppose you could call it Iconic Cars. It's like, uh, like a car equivalent of the Iconic Arms series, except it focused not on the depiction of cars across all games, but just in Forza 5. This one, I actually recorded the gameplay, I wrote the script, I even recorded the script, uh, but it didn't proceed any further than that. Unfortunately, I have since deleted the gameplay, so I'd have to re-record if I ever wanted to redo it. This is something that I, I suppose I could do it. I don't know, Forza 5 is not as timely as it was, but I suppose I could try some car-related content. Could be interesting. So those are two projects that recently uh, made the most traction. But honestly, most ideas don't really make it out of the production stage. I might do some test graphics for some stuff, but I generally don't sink a lot of hours unless I'm going to finish a video. Having a look through my archived projects folder, what have I got? Oh, I've got a special on the terminology of video games, on the use of computer game versus video game and their geographic locations. 
I did some initial research on this, and it turns out that it wasn't very interesting. I've also mooted content for Forza 4 back in the day, but again, that never came to fruition. There's an early concept for a, a Minecraft series, which <laughs> didn't get far. And uh, there's also a slightly more structured review format as well. But truth be told, don't really like doing reviews because everyone and their dog does reviews. They're really, you know, they're kind of a logical and easy thing to do. Hello, my name is YouTuber X, and this is what I think about this game. It's been uttered a million times, and honestly, it's difficult to have a unique insight on that sort of thing. I'm happy to talk about my thoughts and my initial impressions and, you know, uh, overall impressions of games in the bonus, but I don't really want to sort of codify that into a series of videos, because it's not what I want to do, particularly. So yeah, yeah, I mean, occasionally videos do get cancelled, but generally speaking, it's, it's early on, it's uh, in the planning stages, I think, hang on a minute, this isn't going to work terribly well. As a general rule of thumb, if I'm sinking, you know, tens of hours into something, I'm going to see it through, just... Just because, you know, you've already sunk a few hours into it, you might as well finish it, you know? I'm pretty sure that's a sunk cost fallacy, but it doesn't really matter. Kozo says, uh, I know it's a long time off, but how about a Witcher 3 special? Talking about in-game boss monsters in a tavern story-like manner. Also, seeing as we're on this and seeing the new trailer, are you excited for the game? The Witcher 3 looks really nice. It's a very pretty game, and the world looks absolutely compelling, and... Uh, if it's full of, you know, wild monsters and things to hunt, it could be very, very cool. It kind of serves as a, like a big, huge reminder for me to finish The Witcher 2, because I haven't finished it, and I'd really like to. So I think I shall, uh, I'll have to make a concerted effort to actually try and finish the game before 2015, which is, of course, when The Witcher 3 arrives. As far as The Witcher 3 video is concerned, I'd like to, actually. I think The Witcher 3 will be a, a moderately big game, and it's certainly worth a single video. And uh, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, I'm not sure what format could work. Maybe, like you say, a, a, a tale of monsters, a bestiary, could work pretty well. But uh, I'm not going to commit to anything at this stage, of course. It's, uh, it's a while off, yeah, it's a while off. But yeah, yeah, Witcher 3 content, certainly possible. Certainly if I'm doing variety content then. Yeah, you never know, I could be stuck doing Call of Duty still. <laughs> I hope I'm not, but we'll see. SBO The Triforce says, What about a brief history of advertisement in video games? Uh, the thought has struck me, actually. I was playing some Cool Spot, and uh, I thought I should do a brief history of product placement. Uh, because, of course, uh, Cool Spot was the mascot of 7-Up, of all things, and apparently they needed to have a game based on a, a lightly carbonated lemon-lime beverage. <laughs> anyway, there's a long history of it. I think uh, one of the first, I think, was it 1977, or round about then, there was a game based on an, uh, the Nissan cars. It was um, a version of Night Driver, but it was branded as like uh, one of the Z cars, I think, from Nissan. A quick Google tells me it was called Datsun 280 Zap, also released unbranded as Midnight Racer. It was released in 1976, and uh, it might possibly, might possibly be one of the first instances of, of kind of a branded advertisement for a video game. Possibly, I don't know, I haven't done my full research on this. Wikipedia says it is one of the earliest games, if not the earliest, with authorised branding. So that's, that's an interesting start, I suppose, and there, there have been plenty of games that have featured products and stuff like that. Um, recently, stuff like Alan Wake has had Energizer batteries. There have been countless games with, with jarring advertisements in. Uh, Zool on the Amiga, that are, that are Chupa Chups, uh, lollies. So yeah, I think the topic is, it's explorable, certainly, but... Uh, I've got to do a brief history of piracy first, because, well, that's what I'm committed to. That'll come after I've uh, polished off Titanfall. I do love doing these brief history videos, but they aren't half expensive to produce, both in terms of actually having to buy games, and also the time investment. It's going to be at least two weeks' work. Now, hopefully I'll be able to disguise this by getting slightly ahead of schedule and, and queuing up an extra video. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they do take me a little while, which is why I can't really hope to do more than a few a year. But yeah, advertising, product placement, that's uh, that's certainly a potential. We'll see. Who's Evasive says, How is the Kinect video quality compared to a decent webcam? Uh, it's alright, yeah. It's 1080p, it's it's full HD, and it's... Yeah, it's like webcam quality. It's alright. It's not exactly anything to write home about, but it's sufficient, you know? Works pretty well in low-light situations as well. Certainly good enough for live streaming, anyway. I used mine the other day to... Uh, I broadcast about three hours of Titanfall. I was grinding out some challenges. 
In fact, I've still got to grind out some more, so I probably, uh, probably will live stream again at some point fairly soon. So yeah, the Kinect camera, good enough for my needs. KFVN says, Hey Stu, do you think the gaming industry is ready for a diskless gaming system? I currently have two 360s, and the only trouble they've given me is their habitually failing optical drives. I was intrigued by Microsoft dropping the price of the one with the Kinect, but I won't likely get one until they do the same move with the optical drive. Your thoughts? Is the gaming industry ready for a diskless gaming system? Well, all you need to do really is look at Steam, because Steam is pretty well established, it's incredibly popular, and, well, it is diskless. So I think it's safe to say that, yeah, yeah, the industry is more than ready for it. But I suppose you're talking about consoles. And they have made some effort on the digital front, uh, both Sony and, and Microsoft. But they haven't quite nailed it, have they? I mean, the fact is, if I wanted to get a copy of Watch Dogs on release day, I could have paid 40 quid for a disc, which enables me to share the game with my friends after I finished it, or, or I could pay £60 for a digital copy, which I then have to download, and that I can't share outside of my, my home Xbox. Now, I'm in the UK, and our digital prices are perhaps more baffling than, say, in the US, but it seems to me like going all digital you get a mild convenience in that you don't need to insert the disc. But it's just, you're paying more for less flexibility, it seems, and I really don't like that. I wish the pricing on digital was keener. I wish they had more robust price shaping. I wish games came down in price more rapidly. Sony is guilty of this too, although they tend to be slightly better on pricing, I think. But compared to Steam, I mean, if you go into Steam, the prices are actually normally pretty fair. But... I mean, it's the same on 360. You look at games which are, are old and you can pick up second hand for five pounds and they'll, they'll be 20 quid on, on Xbox. And it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Who would pay that? Apart from somebody who's completely ignorant of the fact that there's a, a fairly healthy second hand market where you can get discs that work just fine for, for fractions of what they're on offer for in the digital marketplace. Anyway, anyway. I'd like to have a diskless system, I'd like for all my games to be digital, something like Steam, but on consoles. But until they get the pricing at a sensible level, it just isn't going to happen. Next up, uh, is this better YouTube? Says, OK, Stu, Tarantino, or Scorsese? Uh, tough question, they're both very different, but of the two, I, I guess, probably I fall on the Tarantino side. Geeky Nerd for the Win says, have you played Call of Duty after you finish the Ghost's Guides? Very little. I don't mind the game, I don't think it's necessarily a bad game, but uh, you know what? My desire to play the multiplayer has pretty much evaporated, uh, since my duty to play the multiplayer has also evaporated. So there's that. I feel as though I've had my fill. Johannes Solem Helgemo says, Do you think the future of weapons is bullpup? Uh, yes, yes, at least in the case of kind of modern, over-engineered weapons. Eventually, I suppose we're going to see stuff like electronic trigger systems, and if you've got an electronic trigger, then, well, you might as well have a bullpup. The key advantage of a conventional layout is in a in more logical trigger positioning when it comes to mechanical linkages. So if you're ever going to have a system in which you've got electronical triggers, or if you don't necessarily need a decent trigger, then a bullpup becomes the slightly better choice because you've got a longer barrel for shorter overall length. I think some roles suit a conventional layout more, you know, marksman roles, sniper roles, that sort of thing, where length is less of a factor. And I, I do think the military is quite conservative when it comes to adopting stuff like this, so I wouldn't expect to see the AR-15 replaced in the US Army anytime soon by some bullpup weapon. Because, of course, a switch to a bullpup requires a, you know, it's a huge change in ergonomics, which means your training regimen has to change as well. And American marksmanship is, is again, quite traditional. So, yes, bullpups, wave of the future. I quite like them. I think they look all spacey and futury. I, I quite like it. Soldier Side 365 says, Stu, who's your favourite TV chef? Nigella Lawson, without a shadow of a doubt. Mr. Wrightsab says, how much data would you have stored on any given day? Given the amount of projects you juggle, I would imagine you have a fairly substantial hard disk drive volume. My main work drive is uh, 10 terabytes uh, with redundant storage. Works at about 8 terabytes usable. It's a Drobo thing. I've also, beyond this, I've also got a recording drive, which is a little faster, but also not redundant. Uh, but that weighs in at 3 terabytes of space. 
It's never enough, of course, so I do tend to delete footage after I'm done with it. Anyway, we've hit the 20 minute mark, I've just finished a race, so I suppose this is as good a place as any to wrap up the bonus. Thank you to everybody who provided the questions and comments last week, and thank you in advance for the questions and comments you'll leave for next week in the comment section below. Uh, this Friday, we've got another Titan 4 video. Boo! Titan 4! Titan 4's dead! Um, we've got <laughs> just three episodes left. For those eager for more variety, I'm probably going to do a couple of videos over the next few weeks. I may do a Destiny Alpha video, because I do have access to that. I may do a Battlefield Hardline uh, beta video. And also, I'm going to do a video for Enemy Front, which is a new World War II FPS which is released this week. That nobody seems to be talking about, and it's probably going to be pretty terrible. It might not be terrible, it might actually be really great, but I have a suspicion it actually will be terrible. But I'm still going to do a video for it, because that's just how I roll. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, farewell. <laughs>